have something that I want to do before we enter into the Word. This is why I've been in a bit of a rush, because we had all these announcements, and uh, there's time to do everything, of course. But um, we have a special friend um, from um, Israel. We heard from Sandra Barris a couple of times over the years, who heads uh, the, the ministry Heartland, uh, Christian Friends of Israeli Communities. And this is a, a kind of a um, frontier ministry where we get the, the opportunity to affirm and support our Israeli friends who are, um, how should I say, they are stating that Israel and Palestine uh, and Samaria are part of the Jewish, of the Israeli history and heritage. And, you know, people have asked me sometimes, well, why don't you, you know, as Christians, why don't we just get involved with uh, Messianic Jews, and I'll be very open here, you know, who believe in Jesus and so on and so forth. Why um, establish these relationships with, with people who are not necessarily totally aligned with uh, our values and so on and so forth? Well, you know why? Because I believe that you have to think strategically. You have to think uh, beyond the box. And I think that um, our friends in Israel who are so attacked by the media and who are the only the only democracy in the Middle East and a nation that is so admirable in so many ways and that we are linked to them by scriptural, historical links that are so powerful and that we believe that God is working in Israel. Israel, we have believed always, is the clock of human history. As Israel goes, you know, the, 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 the history of mankind goes. This is in the Bible. One of the greatest moments in all of history was when Israel became a nation again after 2,000 years of a dispersion, diaspora, of just being spread all over the world and not being a nation. And uh, we, we see that in the scriptures there was all kinds of prophecies about uh, Israel becoming a nation again. It says that when the Messiah would come again, Israel and the temple would be built. And so we believe that uh, it, by partnering with Israel, um, we are fulfilling a very important mandate, a very important part by supporting the nation of Israel. Israel is not perfect. The Israelis know this themselves. Every nation has uh, things that you can criticize it for. Look at our own nation, how many mistakes are made all the time. But I think Israel is, occupies a very special place in prophecy, occupies a very special place in God's heart. And Christian communities need to be alerted to the need to support the nation of Israel because of what God is doing sovereignly there, what he has been doing over the centuries. And this moment in history is crucial. And so we need to support Israel. And this is why I think this is a very missionary work. And because our church, congregation, Lion of Judah, has a special affinity with the nation of Israel. So I've invited my friend, Shmuel Junger, to come forward. Shmuel, is that Samuel, right? That's Samuel. And Shmuel is a dear friend because when we went to Hebron uh, in our trip, which you will one day get to go to as well, uh, in Hebron, which is in the heart of uh, Samaria and um, Judea, in Judea, forgive me. And Hebron is one of the most um, historic biblical cities in all of uh, Scripture. And, uh, you know, very few um, tours get to go to where we went inside where the tomb of the patriarchs is. And our friends, uh, the Christian communities uh, in favor of Israel or for Israel, uh, were the ones who kind of were our godparents to bring us into that place. And we had a wonderful presentation on, on Shemuel's part. So he's here visiting the U.S. now, and we get to hear him first. He's nice and fresh, having arrived recently. And I don't want to take away his thunder, but I um, just wanted you to know what a special person he is. And I wanted him to share a bit about... Um, his work and what he does and his own experience as a supporter of Israel and being an Israeli who lives there as well. Welcome, Shmuel. Give him another hand and, and make him feel right, right at the corner. Thank you, everyone. Shalom. Shalom. Guys, only 14 hours ago, I said goodbye to my family in Samaria. And here I am here in Boston. I am tired. I'm exhausted. I want to go to sleep. But it's a huge privilege for me to come and address you today. And I would say this. I had lower energy when I started this assembly today. 
after one hour of you preaching, singing, praying, a lot of energy came here. So now I'm standing here much, much better. Thank you for that. Friends, there's a lot to say about the story of Israel, Judea, and Samaria. Honestly, the time I have today, we spoke about it, 15 minutes is not enough. I am going to guess two things already, okay? And hopefully I'm going to be correct. One, everybody here in this community heard about Israel, knows about the state of Israel, knows about the story of the people of Israel. Am I correct? Great. Two, they, there are people in this group, I remember, that actually visited Israel. If you visited Israel, raise your hand. You see, we have a few. The last thing I would say is this. Christian friend of Israeli communities has been working with the Lion of Judah for a couple of years now. And I know for a fact many of you receives information from us. Mails, newsletters. In the end of this talk, you're going to receive an opportunity to sign in for our information. Then you can continue to learn about our story. Because the story is not going to finish in the couple of minutes I'm going to address you today. Okay? Friends, around the world, if you would come to a synagogue, a Jewish synagogue, yesterday, Sabbath, you would read a portion of the Bible. In Judaism, we read a portion of the Bible every week. Yesterday was the portion in the book of Numbers called Shlach Lecha. You should send. The story is about the 12 spies arriving in Israel after Moses sent them. Sounds familiar? Let's tell the story in one minute. Before we're entering Israel, Moses gather around all the biggest people of each tribe and they send them and he sends them to a mission to spy over Israel. Spy, check out what is the story there. How are the people? How are the cities like? Do they have fruits? Rich, poor, tell us more about it. You know the story? They enter 12 people, 12 people come out. 10 of them said awful things about Israel. The people of Israel are giants. The fruits are nice, but the people there are so insane. We were like rats or ants next to them. The people there are so strong, there is no chance we would defeat them. And they add another thing. Why God took us out of Egypt to kill us in this desert? We have no chance to fight against them. Two people from the 12th group say, not true. The opposite. One is Joshua and one is Caleb. Okay? The question I want to ask and raise today is this. If you are sending your commander and you're sending a group, a troop to bring information and they bring back information of things they saw, what's the complaint? Was it not true that they had huge people there? Was it not true that they saw castles? Was it not true that they were tiny in front of them? I don't understand. You send us for a mission, but when we bring back the report, the report is not good enough. So you blame us and you punish us. Friends, the punishment for this scenario was journeying 40 years in the desert. Because of that moment, the whole generation died in the desert and didn't enter the promised land. We just brought the facts. 
Why do you blame us? What did we do wrong? The answer is quite simple. You were asked to bring information, but for some reason, in the process of coming back with the information, you put your own will, emotions, and thoughts above God's will. Outcome? Dear spies, you knew you were taken out of Egypt to be brought to this land. You knew this is the promised land and the journey was into it. So now you think you're going to bring your own perspective that's going to be your will above God's will? We're afraid. But God wants you to enter. But we have good jobs here in the desert. We don't want to go and who knows what's going to happen in Israel. But God's will is here. Whenever people are putting their own interest above God's will, we're starting the disaster. We just heard randomly from two people who stood here a couple of minutes ago and says, we have a lot of problems to live. This is our own will, might even to stay. But we heard God's will, and we're putting God's will above anything. The people who live in Israel, the vast majority of the people, have a very good, decent life. There is a problem, though. Half a million Jews live in an area called the West Bank. The occupied territories. These are the area we call the biblical heartland. You know why? Because every story you read in the Bible happened in Judea and Samaria. Places like Hebron, we just saw. Places like Shechem, Bethel, and many others. And Jerusalem. Until 1967, we didn't hold the land. But then we saw God's will in action. In six days, the people of Israel in the Six Days War were able to defeat all the countries around us that attacked us. This is God's will. This is God's will. Now, life there is not easy. But I've just started by saying this. When we want to put our own needs above God's will, we're starting a disaster. So what are we doing there? People, settlers who live in the area are doing God's will. Even though it's not easy. Because if you visited there, you remember, we are surrounded by enemies, by Arabs who want us out of there. They wake up in the morning and they go to sleep at night thinking, how can we make their life miserable? My son is going to school in a bulletproof bus. Because if it's not going to be a bulletproof bus, God forbid. We live on a daily basis with the thought in our mind that we are doing what God's want from us. Starting from the Bible, continue to the prophecies. Now it's funny. Only when I sat here, I understood something amazing. <coughs> this is the Lion of Judah, right? There were two tribes who didn't sin in the scene of the spies. Joshua was from Ephraim and Caleb was from Judah. Was the highest person in the tribe of Judah. Because when you remember to put God's will above anything, you become the Lion of Judah. Funny enough, if you're going to read inside the Bible, you would see that Caleb did something 
very interesting when he entered Israel. You know what he did? He stopped in Hebron, in the tomb of the patriarchs. He prayed there. Thank you. He prayed there to God through the patriarchs to help him not to surrender to his own wishes. It says that he stopped in Hebron. Christian friend of Israeli communities met the Lion of Judah in Hebron. We started the journey of partnership together in that place. The thing that connects us is that we are trying to put God's will above anything. In the two minutes I have left, I would say this. We are an organization that tries to support the people who live in those communities, Judea and Samaria. And even when life there is not easy, we encourage them and tell them something from your own mouth. We are with you. There are people all over the world, Lion of Judah, that contributes and supports and cares about you because you are fighting in a daily basis to do God's will. Not many people can say in 2019, they live a life of a pioneer. The people of Judea and Samaria can say so because they live and they suffer and their life is not easy because they're doing God's will. I encourage you to go online, write CFOIC, Christian Friend of Israeli Communities, read about us, hear the history, understand why it's so important for us to be part of this biblical heartland. This is where everything started. Hebron, Judah, and God's will. I hope that we're going to have continue this partnership and I'm going to have an opportunity to come and address and tell you the whole story because in 15 minutes, it's hard to tell the whole story. But I feel that if you can leave it one sentence is put God's will above anything and you will be successful. Thank you very much. <laughs> Friends in the back. They are signing cards to receive information from our ministry. Please do so. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Shmuel. And before you leave, why don't we just extend our hand and bless our brother Shmuel and bless the people of Israel. Father, we thank you for this man who is a true uh, pioneer and a true carrier of your will as he and all those who live in those uh, frontier places in Israel that are part of your, uh, the inheritance that you have given your people. And you have said in your word that it is an eternal covenant that you have made with Israel. It is an unbreakable covenant. It is a covenant of love. And uh, they are there being witnesses and sometimes martyrs uh, to that mandate and to uh, that love that you have for Israel, that preferred love that you have for your people that is unbreakable. And so we stand with him, we stand with all the people of Israel, we bless that nation because you have said that we, we should bless your people. We bless him, his family as he stands far away from them today doing your work here in the United States. We pray that you will give him fresh energy, you will renew his strength, and you will protect him in his comings and goings and show us how to partner more uh, strategically with the people of Israel. We bless him. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Thank you, Shmuel. God bless you.